Hi friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today we are going to be making this fun hydro water bottle. I actually did this for my sister for her birthday. So with that, let's jump right in. I hope you enjoy and don't forget to like and subscribe. So to start, we are going to use the epoxy method to glitter our tumbler. I am starting with a sanded and prepped tumbler and we are going to be using tons of glitter and just sprinkling it in random spots all over uh, the tumbler. Um, I used uh, glitter from Maestro's Creations, Granny and Slimed. I also used glitter from Glitter Guy. I used Wisteria Lane. From PDB, I used Monarch, Scoville, Gumdrop, Mermaid Crush, and Goddess. And without any rhyme, reason, or pattern, I am simply sprinkling all the different colors and cuts of glitter all over the tumbler. This is going to be our dragonflies in our peekaboo. So um, I really wanted to make sure that we had a good mix of all the colors um, and spread out throughout the entire tumbler. Now, once I have my glitter coverage exactly like I want it and the colors are all spread out, um, I am going to simply take my computer paper here, I'm going to roll my tumbler up, and I am going to make sure that I flatten any of the pokey bits that may be sticking up. From there, we are going to go in with two coats of epoxy. Um, I am using uh, 25 milliliters for both coats um, on this 20 ounce uh, hydro flask. Um, I am going to make sure that I am spreading it on nice and even and making sure that I get good coverage um, all over the tumbler up at the top rim, the bottom rim, and then of course the bottom itself. Uh, once I have my tumbler completely coated, I am going to go in with my torch. Um, I got it from Amazon and I'm going to pop any micro bubbles that we may have. This way we've got a beautiful glass-like finish on our tumbler. And we're going to let that cure uh, for six to eight hours. Um, drying times may vary depending upon the epoxy that you're using. From here, we're going to go into our sanding. Now, this is super port important piece when you're doing a peekaboo. You want a very, very nice, even, flat surface. The reason for this is because when you spray over with your spray paints, um, you are going to be able to see any lumps or bumps. But to start, we're going to do the rim. I've taken my blade and I've just scraped off any epoxy at the top. And then I'm going in with my 120 grit flap wheel on my Dremel and we are going to clean up the rim to expose um, a fair amount of stainless steel. This way our epoxy has something to grip onto. Um, I do go a little bit lower than I normally would because it is a peekaboo um, and I just want to make sure that I've got good, um, good coverage with my epoxy and it's got something to seal in. From there I'm going to use my hand sander and I am going to simply rock my cup back and forth um, and sand all over just to ensure that I have got a beautiful flat surface um, so that my spray paint has something even to go on to and that it looks really, really great. Um, from there, I'm going to wash it with Dawn dish soap and we're ready for our next steps. Now to create the stencils, I used my Creative Fabrica and I searched dragonflies. From there, I picked out um, actually quite a few different types of dragonflies that I liked. Um, and I uh, one came with an offset, the others I created my own in my Cricut Design Space. But what you're seeing here is me simply going through, picking the dragonflies that I want to use and uploading them. From there, I did an offset. Um, I believe uh, I did probably a 0.15 offset. My offsets are pretty small. Um, 
because I just want them to be the outline for the dragonflies. Um, from there, I duplicated them um, and I picked the size that um, I liked the best. I think all of my dragonflies were about two or two and a half inches. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, um, but I set those, I duplicated them, and then I got them sorted onto my mat. Um, you'll see me here. I am going back and forth, um, and I'm just checking my contour cup cuts. Um, sometimes um, with really intricate cuts, it can be a little bit more challenging, um, but once I've got all my contour cuts uh, done, I jump right in and I begin the sorting of the mats. I select my um, material that I'm going to be using. Uh, in this case, I did stencil vinyl and I also did premium vinyl um, holographic because that was going to be the outlines for my, uh, my dragonflies. Once I had all of that sorted out, I began. Uh, my cut and then I got ready to weed. So as we move into the weeding process, here you see I'm using my stencil vinyl. Um, it weeds very, very easily. But what I'm doing is I'm taking all of my solid um, dragonflies and pulling out any of the designs in between them. And from there, once I've completed this, I am going to start placing my stencils all over my cup. Um, I am paying special attention while I'm placing these to make sure that these are all laid really nice and flat. Um, the reason that this is important is because sometimes we can get overspray that seeps under the, the stencil vinyls um, and that can impact the design of the peekaboo. I'm also paying special attention. I do have a decal that we are going to be creating. Um, so I want to make sure that I have got plenty of space for my decal there. Once I've got all my stencils on, I'm going to go in and we are going to spray paint this. I am using Rust-Oleum um, two times uh, and this is just their gray color. Uh, it is in a matte finish. So um the finish really isn't going to be super important um, because the epoxy is going to shine up whatever finish we have. But I am going to spray that uh, really nice, make sure that I've got a good coat and good coverage on it. Um, if need be, um, I would say pause, let it dry, and go back if you need more coverage. Now, once that is fully dried, um, you're going to go in and you're going to remove all of your stenciling. Um, for me, friends, this is seriously the best part. It is so gratifying to be able to see um, all of that glitter and work that we put in beforehand um, come through so you can really see your design come to life. Um, but I am going to keep removing um, these with my tweezers uh, throughout the entire cup. Um, please make sure that you take your time with this. Um, you don't want to start moving so fast that you scratch that, um, spray paint job that you did, um, because that will also impact your design. Um, now you're going to see me do a couple things here. Once I finish pulling off all of my stencils, um, I debated going in and putting my outlines on, um, in effort just to save, uh, an extra step. Uh, and you will see that I very, very quickly change my mind and decide that that is not, um, the best idea. Um, so it, if you are confident that your spray paint isn't going to pull up, by all means, you can definitely put your outlines on after. Um, I chose not to. I was worried my spray paint would pull up. So I did go in with a very thin coat of epoxy in this next step. Um, I think I probably used about 10 to 15 mLs of epoxy. Um, and once I had all of my epoxy on, um, same as I always do, friends, I went ahead and I got out my torch and I popped any micro bubbles that may have been sneaking around 
and let that cure for six to eight hours. While I was waiting on that, I went into Creative Fabrica. I found my decal. This one says, when dragonflies appear, an angel is near. Um, and I thought that that was very suiting for my sister's cup. And from there, I downloaded the file and then uploaded it into um, my Cricut Design Space. Now, from here, we're going to use the printing cut. Um, so I do remove the background just to see if it's going to remove anything that may be a little bit more tricky for me to cut around um, and decided um, that wasn't necessary for this particular design. So I went ahead and I kept everything as it was. I named it and then I uploaded it into Design Space. Once I had it in uh, Design Space, I realized that I had made a boo boo um, and had done the cut version and then thought, well, there's a way that I can salvage this and I can do a layer of white vinyl um, under my water slide. Um, later in the video, you'll see that I scrapped this idea. Um, a big part of that was that my vinyl didn't weed the way that I had wanted to. Um, and I was able to see that my water slide actually showed up really, really nicely um, on the gray. So um, didn't have to use that. But um, for those of you guys that wanted more information on the printing cut, um, you're simply going to select the print and cut option. Um, and from there, you're going to want to size it however um, big or small you are wanting your decal to be. Um, if you want to have an offset or create a, um, a vinyl cutting underneath, you can definitely do so, um, which is what you're seeing me try and do here but I ended up not using that. So I did size my, um, my decal and then I sent it to be printed. And from there, um, I actually manually hand cut most of my printing cuts because I use um, clear water slide. Um, but you can also use your Cricut or Silhouette to cut out the design. Um, just make sure that you add the bleed section. Uh, when I print, I make sure that I am printing on the best quality and that the uh, media I'm using is photo setting. Um, I find that I get the best results when I use those settings. And then once I print it, I go out and I seal it with uh, Rust-Oleum uh, clear two to three times and then my decals are ready to go. Now, if you want to use the actual cut setting, um, you won't obviously cut <laughs> the way that I am here. But again, I'm using clear water slide, so I didn't really need to. Um, I am going to put my water slide in my little tub um, and then make sure that the surface that I'm wanting to put my uh, water slide on is wet. Um, this will allow me to move the water slide around without it negatively impacting or stretching. Uh, and then from there, we're simply going to squeegee out any excess water or air bubbles. Um, you can also use a microfiber cloth like I am here. And then you just want to allow your water slide to dry. I think I allowed mine to dry for about 30 minutes. Um, and then I was ready to go in with my final coats of epoxy. This cup did take two final coats of epoxy, each being 20 milliliters. And I did go in and um, pop any bubbles that I may have had with my kitchen torch. And then you guys, I let it spin and cure for six to eight hours and we were done. Um, I absolutely, absolutely love how this turned out. I love that it is a hydro flask. Um, she's going to be able to take it to yoga with her. Um, it's probably far more functional than a cup would be. Um, but I would love to know what you guys think. And if you guys do duplicate this design, please tag me in socials. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next week.